Hi, everyone. Welcome to No Kill in Motion. I'm here with Shirley Marsh from Yes Biscuit and Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado. I'm going to go back. Uh, well, it's, it's almost a year, actually. Uh, it was uh, uh, December uh, 2021. Nathan Winograd came out with a series called Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow Animals Sheltering in the United States. It's on his sub stack. We, we, we encourage you to look at it. But uh, there's a four or five part series. Um, and we're going to go through some of them today. We're just going to go through the first one, which is mainly talking about the. It wasn't really the original No Kill, but it was it was it was it was an inspiration for No Kill. Henry Berg was from the 1800s. Um, he was an animal advocate. Um, he was essentially a No Kill advocate. There was no word for that then. Um, and whether it was horses or dogs or or, or whatever, he actually made. Uh, wild changes, and he was the founder of the uh, ASPCA, the New York, most people don't realize that, it's a New York organization, it's not really a national organization, they only have one shelter in all of the United States, but they do do work in, in, in other states, um, um, so this is really talking about where sheltering came from, and, and, and a lot of people don't realize that for a hundred years or more, um, you know, the, the philosophy was uh, adopt some out and kill the rest. Um, that really was, that was the whole thing until, you know, the latter part of the last century. Um, and No Kill has, has been a couple of decades old and we have seen massive improvement because of that. But, um, but the origin was that um, and sheltering has changed dramatically in just the last couple of decades. Aubrey, what'd you think of this uh, this this first part of this series and uh, and how it affects animal sheltering? Um, just it, just as a comment on the series as a whole, it's a five part series, and actually there's a, a sixth podcast that I think kind of relates. Um, I ended up doing a blog about it, and I used the word gobsmacked because I really was just taken by this series. Um, I know that we're going to talk about just the first part, but I would encourage everybody to to listen to the the Substack series, um, the yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And when we share this, I'll share the link for part one. But it's really just it's it's like uh, it's like going to school. And we know that Nathan Winograd wrote about Henry Berg, who he called the Great Meddler, um, in his book Redemption. But um, this goes into more detail than he went into in the book. And I think it's important to um, look back at, at the origins, I would say, of our movement. Um, the, the wonderful thing I found about the series too is that it's Jennifer Winograd along with Nathan. And I think, you know, Nathan is the face of the No Kill Advocacy Center and he his name is on the books, but I think I didn't really appreciate the fact that both Nathan and Jennifer Winograd have been in this from the start. I mean, she's as much a part of the No Kill Advocacy Center and a part of, of this advocacy and this movement as Nathan. We just don't think of her in that way. So shout out to Jennifer Winograd. I mean, they uh, this series is great because it's very conversational. I mean, they're not lecturing. It's like they're having a chat and it's just kind of this going back and forth. But um, on this first part, um, I ended up like, I guess every, every good student does, um, I ended up taking notes um, because um, each of the recordings lasts a little while. I mean, I think this first one about Henry Berg, I think it's like 15 minutes long. Um, and I would encourage people to just listen to it. You can listen to it while you're doing something else, um, while you're exercising or cleaning or whatever. But um, there were some some things that just kind of uh, popped to mind about this first one um, is Number one is that Henry Berg came to his animal welfare calling um, kind of like many of us have because of a specific incident in his life. Um, he was living in St. Oh, Petersburg, the, Russia. Yeah, he, I he call was it a, the he, aha moment. There, yeah, the aha moment, moment yeah. right. I, for me, I call it my unwelcome epiphany. Yeah. But yeah. Um, he had been appointed to be a diplomat in Russia who was appointed by Abraham Lincoln. And he saw a, a horse that was being beaten in St. Petersburg. And it just he just had to stop it. Um, and he did. And he 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 thought that his life was going to be served in the diplomatic service, but he found all that pretty boring. And then after he helped save this horse, he was just like, OK, well, I found my calling. Um, so there was that. He had the aha moment. Um, he um, created what I think that I would call the first Kappa um, by creating an animal protection law in New York in 1867. I mean, when we look at the Companion Animal Protection Act that we promote today, 
um, that we asked people to, to where we codify standards. He did that first in New York. Um, he was subject to the same criticism and ridicule as advocates are today. Um, I mean, we know that we've all been in a position where we've been called names, we've been ridiculed, we've been vilified um, for speaking out about how shelters operate. And he was very much subject to that. Um, another interesting thing is that, um, you know, we often get criticized for caring about the lives of animals and people will come out and claim that, well, because we advocate for animals that we don't care about people. Um, I was reminded with Henry Berg that the two are not mutually ex exclusive. He created not only the um, American Society for the P Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, but the first Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. So we're all capable of advocating for the best for humans at the same time as we do for animals. Um, Berg was very much worried about the corrupting influences of money, power, and politics. And we see that today where we have um, allegations that organizations have grown so large and there's so much money involved that they've lost sight of what they should have been doing. Um, and, and one other thing about Henry Berg was he did all these great things in New York. His model was adopted in different parts of the country, but when he died, it all just kind of unraveled. And the ASPCA took over the pound contract and became the biggest killer of animals is the, the biggest reason why they were dying. Um, and that of course led to a point where we are now where I think if Henry Berg were aware of the ASPCA of today in New York, that is a multi-million dollar money making machine, he probably has not just rolled over in his grave, he's probably still spinning in his grave because people think the ASPCA is this national organization that does all these great things because they see the ads on TV. Um, it's one place, it's in Manhattan, one. And most of their money is spent on salaries and marketing. So um, the, those were kind of my highlights and I'm sorry, Shirley, I can talk about this stuff. <laughs> all right. the, the, all right. That was the, the notes from my part of the class. Well, and, and you know, and and the, the yeah, that thing about the ASPCA, I mean, there there are advocates, there are no-kill advocates that have been fighting um, in New York for years. You can look, uh, you can see them. I'm trying to remember the Facebook pages. I'm going to look them up while Shirley's talking, and I'll mention them in later. Shirley, uh, Henry Berg, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, this, this, uh, this podcast series from Nathan. I uh, really loved this podcast. I'm not a huge podcast listener, but I really enjoyed this um, specifically because it's uh, about Henry Berg, who is a very colorful character. And it's um, he lived in a time uh, around the turn of the century, which is um, an area that a, a period of time that I have researched quite a bit. Um, I, I, I love hearing about anything from that era. Um, one thing that uh, um, they didn't mention in the podcast, but but I know from my own research is that uh, Henry Berg ended up having a somewhat unlikely ally in uh, the form of one of the animal newspapers at the time, um, Forest and Stream. They were covered a lot of hunting issues. They reported on dogs and dog shows quite extensively. And um, when uh, someone was trying to get uh, what is called deer hounding um, it made legal in the state of New York, um, they wrote into Forest and Stream saying that I, I have talked with Henry Berg and I think that um, he sees that this is not in any way a cool, you know, thing to do. And, and um, I think he's, he's pretty much behind it. And so Forest and Stream turned right around and went to Henry Berg directly. And he ended up writing a letter to make clear. Uh, it was published in 1886. Uh, Forest and Stream published it um, saying, I am 100% against this deer hounding, you know, chasing down deer with dogs. Um, it's not a spore. It's cruel. It's, uh, you know, inflicting extreme uh, pain and a long agonizing death. Um, I, I, you know, want to be absolutely clear. And, and that wasn't the only time something like that happened. But, but uh, Force and Stream, like I say, they're, they're sort of an unlikely ally, but uh, 
but Henry Berg sort of had that effect on people because he was of the same class that um, Horace and Stream catered to, you know? And so in that way, he could um, influence people um, that uh, normally maybe he, he wouldn't have been able to um, uh, about, you know, the animal issues that, that were so important to him. Sorry, I was on mute because my dogs were barking. <laughs> uh, yeah, you made me think, even though, I mean, I know that Berg confronted individuals uh, at times um, on the streets of New York and in St. Petersburg where he, he had his aha moment. But what I also uh, really liked about what I understand from his history is it wasn't about, you know, uh, uh, um, oh, what's the word, uh, ostracizing the, the the general public. Um, it was about reforming systemic issues um, in New York, the dog pound, um, the way that uh, horses were were to be treated, right? The, the water and rest and those kinds of things. Uh, he wasn't really looking at punishing the individual drivers, although he would stop them in the street if they were breaking the law and do that kind of thing. That's different. What he was really looking at was systemic change as opposed to Oh, if people would just be nicer, you know, the world would be a better place. And and we still we hear that same thing today. People do not look at systemic change as much as, you know, uh, punishing the one person who did the thing that we know is wrong and is being repeated. Um, but there's no law or anything around it that actually actually changes that. Um, last thoughts, because I think we're almost out of time. Aubrey, anything else? I would just encourage people to listen to it and then to go on and listen to the to the other parts of it. I think we'll be covering each of them just briefly, just to kind of give people a snapshot so that they know what they'd be um, looking at. I'm really kind of hopeful at some point that Nathan and Jennifer will turn this into a book. I mean, it's been more than a decade since Redemption was written, and I think it would be a great book um, to kind of bring, bring, bring people up to speed what's happened, not only going back to some of the history, but then what's happened since Redemption was published to kind of get us up to where we are. So um, definitely check out Nathan Winograd on Substack. I, I, I agree. I would like to see another book. I, you know, Redemption was great and so was Irreconcilable Differences, but there has been a lot of time in between there. And the, you know, the, uh, the landscape has changed. There's still a lot of work to be done, but there's a lot of victories to actually talk about as well. Right. Um, and so I would like to see that. Well, with that, we have to go. We're out of time. Um, thank you for coming to No Kill in Motion today. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado. I'm here with Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville and Shirley Marsh from Yes Biscuit. We'll see you next time.